Welcome to Outrageous with Nate and the artists in your backyard. Today, we're in Chicago, Illinois to overview some amazing artists. You're gonna to get to meet some artists who do everything from painting to collage to sculpture. Let's go see who's working in your backyard. Follow me. We're once again in the heart of Chicago where we're going to meet Juan Chavez. Juan is a sculpture artist who works on a grand scale. He wants you to get into the sculpture. Let's go see what he's working on in his warehouse. Follow me. As a kid, I was always like, if you don't want to get in trouble, they sent me down to draw. And then I was like, okay, that was my pastime. But I never really took it seriously. I took it more seriously when um, I realized that I couldn't skateboard for the rest of my life. And I wasn't going to make money doing that. That I had to be a different avenue for creativity that I wanted to follow. So I decided to become an artist later on in life. I did a lot of different things. They were very creative and positive things, but it just really led me to want to become an artist. Right? And I really became more of an artist, I think, when I discovered sculpture. Now, how do you begin, like, when you're building these structures like you build? I mean, obviously... I build... I, those are my drawings. Right. So I don't, I don't draw. Yeah, it's just So, like, I don't draw because I lose a lot of time in drawing, and I, I get a lot more information from, from the objects themselves. Yeah. I get a lot more information from actually seeing a three-dimensional piece of wood bend yeah. than I would do from a drawing. How, how important is that to you when you build something? Because I've noticed a lot in your pieces that a lot of them are where you can walk through them, you know, and... With the scale, I mean. Well, the, the, what's important to me with the scale, and what's really interesting to me, is the whole idea of accessibility. It's, it's sort of like inviting and opening up the process of creativity to everyone to enjoy. Because I like my work to be very accessible. I don't like my work to sit behind, you know, security guards. And I really like people to interact with it. So to me, it's like, what can I make to make more interaction? How can I create an object that is that goes beyond the object himself? That becomes an event that becomes something larger that creates other sort of forms of, of interaction. I used to paint murals throughout the city, so I did a lot okay. of community-based public work. Yeah, and yeah. Those, those mosaics and murals really created this, this avenue of really a, a strong interest on me because I was meeting people that were like myself when I was a kid that didn't have access to culture, to uh, cultural engagement, but were really sort of talented and they had these like great voices and a great you know way to express themselves and, they, and um, very special like uh, personalities and all that. And I really got interested in sort of becoming part of that element. Yeah. Then when I left that, I still sort of like wanted to invite that into the work because I really liked that it created conversation, that it invited that it, uh, that it invited um, other other takes to it that people can walk through it, that people can use it, uh, you know, as opposed to you stare at it. And that was a really important thing to me. It's always been this moment of not knowing exactly what's coming in front of you and being able to react. And that reaction, that immediate reaction that comes with it is a complete full force of creativity, right? And that's like I said, the moment of invention, right? And that's what I sort of pursue in the art as well. It's like I'm never one of those artists that's never satisfied with doing the same thing twice and making it better and better and better. I'm one of those artists that always constantly, constantly has to be like mining for new ideas and mining for new projects and new concepts that challenge my creativity, challenge my ability to make things. So in that way, you know, every sculpture that I make is just like, I just get this crazy idea and it's like, I want to make this. Is it possible? Is it, is it possible to engineer this piece? Sure, we can figure it out. It's not that difficult. <laughs> I don't know about you, but Juan's amazing sculptures left me inspired. I think we want to create a, a sculpture and I have something we can do with some simple materials. Let's get started. What we're going to need for this is some really simple materials. I took a cereal box, basically cut it open, and now we have this paper. I've got a piece of wood that I'm just recycling that I found. And then I've got some simple uh, acrylic paints, but by all means, you can use whatever paint you've got handy. And then I have Elmer's glue. And I've got a hot glue gun. Now, of course, remember, you gotta be careful with the hot glue gun. You might wanna have your parents' permission before you do that. First thing I'm gonna do is cut my box into some simple long strips. I'm gonna flip them over and get ready to paint them. Depending upon how transparent or how well you can see through your paint, you might wanna let it dry and put another layer. I think that's what I'm gonna do. We gave it some time because we wanna make sure the paper's completely dry before you guys start handling it. Now that my paper's dry, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna cut out before I start gluing down. Now that I have all my pieces cut out, I'm ready to get started. One of the things I love about the cardboard box from your cereal is how thin the cardboard is, which is perfect for that bending and twisting, which is exactly what Juan had, right? So something you might use as some, you know, inspiration, think about 
a skateboard park, like the coolest one you could create for your sculpture, you create that skateboard park. So far, I am loving this idea, and I'm really seeing some of Juan's inspiration, especially with that bird's nest that he was trying to create. Pretty exciting. You guys keep working on this. Remember though, there's a point at which you probably need to stop if it becomes too busy. What I'm thinking I might do with this, when I'm done, I'm gonna put it in my room or my living room. Check it out, pretty cool. All right, everybody, remember, be creative, be innovative, and be outrageous. I'll see you next time.